I see the movies here and I see the diversity of the content and the people making them. Why, why doesn't that translate to the business better? God, here, here. I think, I think what we've seen is that the pipeline, when you look at organizations like Sundance, and it's not just true of Sundance, it's true of many festivals and many support organizations, the pipeline of young talent interested in telling stories is there. But somewhere along the way, they fall out of the business equation of getting that work made. And so as money comes into the equation, diversity, whether it's gender or racial and ethnic diversity, seems to step out. And so really looking at that issue systemically and understanding what is it that, that collectively the field can do to begin to address that, whether it's, um, you know, we're working, for example, the guilds uh, recently have all really set this issue as a big priority, which I think is a great step forward to see all three of them focusing so deeply on this. I think just the awareness of it, one thing our research indicated is that um, one of the biggest obstacles to changing this is that there wasn't an awareness among Hollywood decision makers that this was even a problem. So I actually think what's happened over the last 12 months has made a big progress in that and poised, poised us to make some real change. And to get really specific, um and me, okay, I'll say it anyway. But Ava DeVernay won the um, Best Directing Award here for Middle of Nowhere. That's it. I'll, I'll weigh in with how this, how this came about. It, might, it has to do with history. Um, I was very fortunate as an as a actor uh, for hire to be in the main, what was then the mainstream. That's all there was in the 60s and, and in the 70s. There was just the mainstream. But what the mainstream, which meant studio films, what they had then was they gave you the chance to do smaller films within, within their construct. And I was allowed to, to do some of the films that meant a lot to me. I wanted to do films that were, they were telling stories about America in the gray zone. Not the red, white, and blue zone, but the gray zone, the, the, comp, the, the complicated area uh, that was America that I grew up in. And then in 1980, I was 1979 maybe, you could see there was change coming and it was involving video on demand, it was involving cable, and they were coming on real fast. At the same time, Hollywood, as it once was, was beginning to shrink. It was beginning to become more centralized. It was because Hollywood has always followed the money, rightly so, the money was with youth. So the young market was driving Hollywood's uh, direction. So Hollywood was no longer containing both. They were no longer making the bigger films and the smaller independent films. They were divesting themselves of that and they were focusing on the larger films where the money was. And so I felt that Sundance would be sort of a gap filler, that if we, if we, uh, if we focused on the independent films, the smaller films that were more diverse, that we would, in a way, keep something alive. It was not an insurgency against Hollywood. It was simply to keep something alive that I thought was shrinking to death. And it just coincided with cable and, and so forth and so on. So that's how, how Sundance really started, was to keep alive the idea of diversity and more independent type filmmaking. That, that's sort of its history.